Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Last time I discussed IP VLAN, which is yet another type of networking that can be used for LexD containers. This time we're going to take it a step further and we're going to talk about more LexD networks. So we've covered LexD proxies, bridged, MAC VLAN and IP VLAN as different ways to connect to a LexD container on your network. Proxies provide port forwarding as is commonly used in Docker. Bridged uses a software bridge to provide a unique IP address and MAC address on your LAN for a container. And MAC VLAN uses a software bridge to provide a unique IP address and MAC address on your untagged LAN or on a VLAN. So IP VLAN, which we covered last time, uses a physical adapter to virtually connect a container to your LAN via a static IP, but it also has the same MAC address as the LexD host. So this time we want to talk about another network type which is really kind of specialized and it's called routed. So you would use the routed network to expose containers to a LAN dedicated IP address on an unmanaged network. And specifically, routed containers have the same MAC address as their host, just like IP VLAN did but routed can be used on a wireless connection since it will pass port security because it doesn't try to create another MAC address. And the container address is static and care should be taken not to reuse it on your network to avoid conflicts. And in fact, either set up a DHCP address reservation for it or pick an address that's outside of your uh, I, your DHCP scope. So when exactly do we want to use routed? Well, routed is a good alternative to bridged, but without having to create a software bridge. And routed is sometimes used to connect to a WAN address when you have multiple WAN addresses grounded, granted by your ISP. So this seems to be almost identical, but if you set up a routed uh, LexD container, it's going to think it's on an unmanaged server or rather on an unmanaged network and it's going to assume that it's going to take over the router role and so therefore it's not going to expect to find a router on your network and so if a routed container pops up on your network it will be able to connect to things outside of your network and things outside your network can connect to it with the appropriate rules. And uh, things that are on other VLANs may be able to connect to it and it can connect to other things on the VLANs, but it won't really know how to deal with connecting to things on your same LAN because you've set the container up as being routed. I know this is a little complex, but I wanted to say that routed really does have some very limited use cases as opposed to IP VLAN, um, bridged, or MAC VLAN that we've covered so far. So routed works over a Wi-Fi interface since it uses the same MAC address as the parent. And the same thing can be true of IP VLAN, which we covered in the previous video. So routed may be faster than bridged because of not having to traverse through a software bridge or switch because it itself is actually the real bridge. So here's a little picture down here and it's very similar to the one I presented in the IP VLAN video. We've got our public internet up here. We've got our router here, which our routed um, containers are really not going to be aware of. And I basically say, look at the routed network as a type of bridge, but without a software bridge. And it really is something that kind of takes over the router role. But I see little difference in the implementation of IP, VLAN, and routed network types for LexD containers. 
but their use is actually rather different as I just discussed. And they both use the MAC address of the host server. So let's just say that this down here is a LexD host and these three containers are set up as routed. You can see that the actual host itself, that adapter, has a physical address ending in 489C. And these three routed containers also have a MAC address ending in 489C. Although one would wonder why you would have more than one routed container on the same network, given the role that it's going to play as performing actual routing. So both IPv LAN and routed configure both the network and the configuration inside of the container. So that means they do the net plan part of it but they also do the profile part of it, but it can all be configured from the profile as you're gonna see shortly. And both parts of the configuration can be combined into the single LexD profile. So therefore you don't want applications to make changes to the networking from inside of the container on either an IP VLAN or routed container because then you would be changing how they're initially set up. So let's go take a look at exactly what we do with a routed container. Here we are at the terminal prompt of my LexD host. And the first thing that I want to do is create myself a container. And I'm going to call this test. And I'm going to give it profile default and set boot.autostart equal to true. So that when the LexD host starts up, it starts the containers. So we go ahead and hit enter. It creates the file system. And if we do a LexC list, you can see that 10.230.26.17 is the IP address it got, and that is on the internal NAT. But we're going to turn that into a routed connection next. We start by creating a new profile called routed for our routed network and the command is lexi profile create routed. After the profile is created, I'm going to do a lexi profile edit routed. It's going to pop into the nano editor and in the nano editor I can do control K's to delete each line. Coming to the bottom and I'm going to paste in my sample network configuration for this profile. So the first half of it, and I didn't mention this in the IPv LAN uh, presentation, but from config all the way down to uh, unlink true, we have the part of it that is really the net, pan, net plan configuration file uh, that is used for Ubuntu, except it can be executed in the profile externally, but this is really the internal network part and from description down is really the external part. So just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create my address at 172.16.2.2. Um, in my case, subnet mask of 16. Your network is more uh, likely to be 192.168.1, whatever your address is. Um, and then the subnet mask is probably 24. So I have DHCP4 and DHCP6 set to no because I'm setting a static address here. I have uh, two DNS servers for Cloudflare 1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. And then the routes is set up just like it was in IP VLAN. It just says to any location via the auto configuration address and onlink is true. Uh, that will configure when the system boots and then Again, down here in the actual profile, I use the same address in my case, 172.16.2.2. You're going to want to have this address match with the one above. So the only thing you can tell here apart differently from the IP VLAN profile we went over in the last video is the fact that um, this particular one has a NIC type of routed. So that changes it from IP VLAN to routed. And again, like IP VLAN, the parent, as opposed to being a bridge, is the physical device ENP5S0. So all we have to do now is do a control X, say yes, I want to save that, 
and hit enter and it goes ahead and saves that profile. Since the routed profile has a hard-coded address in it, we're going to go ahead and copy that profile we just created with Alexi profile copy routed to routed under bar 172.16.2.2 to reflect that it's the profile for this particular address. And we need to have just like an IPv LAN uh, where we had a profile for each um, IPv LAN container, we're going to need a separate profile for each routed container. So there I've copied it over. If we do a Lexi profile list, you can see that I have the routed and I have the routed under bar 172.16.2.2. Now, in order to apply this to our container, remind you that Lexi list shows the container that's running there at that particular address. We're gonna to have to stop it before we can make changes to it because it does modify the adapter internally in the first half of the profile. So we're gonna say, let's see, stop test. And then after the container is stopped, we're gonna do a let's see profile add test and then routed. So we'll add this routed profile to the test container. And right after it does that, we'll go ahead and do a Lexi start on test. And we should be able to do a Lexi list. And you can now see that the test container has an address of 172.16.2.2. So here's kind of where the LexD routed protocol somewhat jumps the shark. Because if I do an if config here, inside the container, you can see that I'm at 172.16.2.2. Now, if I go ahead and create myself a new uh, terminal window here on my host, and I do a ping of 172.16.2.2, it is also reachable as we would expect. However, since this thing is using the routed protocol, unfortunately, if I go to my desktop machine and I bring up a terminal and bring it over here and do a ping of 172.16.2.2, it is not reachable. And furthermore, if I connect to something else on my network, like say SSH or do VMS rain, and I try to ping 172.16.2.2. Oops, 16.2.2. You can also see that from here it's unreachable. So what exactly is going on? Well, the thing is, you have outbound connectivity with your routed container, but your routed container kind of assumes that it's going to take over the role of a router. And so it's going to try to route traffic. And so unfortunately, since this node is sitting on my network, it can't really route traffic per se. But what is interesting about it is I'm able to get outside connectivity. I might not be able to ping other things on the same network because it thinks that it's trying to route to those things. So for example, 172.16, 1.51 will be unreachable. However, if I go and ping something on one of my VLANs, which might be 192.168.80.55, it will be able to respond to that. And if I go outside of my network, it'll be able to respond to that by doing, say, a ping to um, google.com you can see there that DNS is working and we're also being able to translate the address and all that's reachable so basically when you decide you want to use a routed container that's why one of the use cases I mentioned earlier is to be able to connect to multiple um, WAN addresses that you might have because this particular container is taking over the role of actually performing
the routing. So in summary, I discussed routed as the last LexD network type because I really prefer proxied, bridged, Mac VLAN, and IP VLAN in that order. And actually myself, I'm kind of partial to bridged and Mac VLAN, but I can see how a specific use case of passing only selected ports makes a proxied connection much more attractive to some people or in operating from a VPS. So routed requires a separate LexD profile for each container, just like IP VLAN. And routed shares the MAC address of the parent, just like IP VLAN, and does not really use DHCP, and so static addresses need to be defined, and that's what you do in the routed profile. IP VLAN and routed containers can also share the same interface. Bridged and Mac VLAN LexD containers cannot ex coexist on the same interface NIC with either IP VLAN or bridged LexD containers. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.